Greetings, you mighty earth-shaking, history-making, mountain-moving, giant-killing, demon-stomping, water-walking champion. God is with you. God is for you. I'm Pastor Glenn, and we're looking at the wonderful story of redemption. And an important part of re the redemption story has not been accurately told and taught to us, and it's very misunderstood today. The resurrection of Jesus from the dead is where we're able to be born again, sons of God, heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ, go to heaven when we die, have everlasting life, and have victory over the devil. And we've been told over and over, and I've taught it myself, that the cross did all of that. And we saw in another lesson seven things that happened on the cross to benefit us, but it was not those things that I just mentioned. It was after being made alive spiritually in hell, and yes, Jesus did go to hell, and we covered that in a previous lesson. Uh, and so uh, I want you to read about what Peter said about Jesus in hell in Acts chapter 2, verse 23 through 32, that Jesus conquered principalities and powers and stripped Satan of his power over every one of us who believe if we receive Jesus as Lord in hell when he was made alive, all right? Colossians 2, 15 says that. Listen, there's a psalm that talks about the Lord being our shepherd, Psalm 23. That's the present day ministry of Jesus. But listen, Psalm 88 is what I call a picture prophecy. God had a lot of dramas acted out in the Old Testament that had a meaning for the time then present, but spoke of what, who Jesus was and what he would do. It was kind of a double whammy we get from that story. So Psalm 88 is a picture prophecy of the suffering of Jesus in hell. It would be good for you to read Psalm 88 and see what Jesus paid for, what he did, so that uh, you and I don't have to pay those same consequences when we die. Jesus was our substitute. He stood in our place. He went to the cross. He had all that physical suffering. Then he went, died spiritually. When he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When he died physically, he went to hell and was tormented there. And so by taking the terrible punishment that you and I deserve, Je on himself, Jesus became our substitute, and man, we don't ever have to think about hell. We think about everlasting life, being with God. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. When God the Father was satisfied that the demands of divine justice had been paid for by Jesus, paid in full for the judgment, the penalty, the consequences, all that stuff for sin by receiving our punishment in hell, and after Jesus suffered sufficiently, God, in effect, called down through the corridors of hell, loose him and let him go. Now, there's no verse that says that, but based, I'm trying to give you a picture, okay? Jesus was then born again, that's true, in the bowels of the earth, Colossians 1.18, Hebrews 12.23, the Revelation 1.5, Romans 8.29. And so Jesus is the first begotten from the dead, it says in the Revelation 1.5 in King James and the other translations too, okay? That means if Jesus is the first begotten from the dead, he's the first person to be born again, having a nature that's opposite of God. Remember, he, he received our nature. So the Bible says in the Good News translation that Jesus is the first to be raised from death. And he's called the firstborn among many brothers and sisters in Romans 8, 29, particularly in the NIV and other translations from the King James. King James says he's the firstborn of many brethren. And that means brethren and sisterin. okay? The Good News Bible says that Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the first to be raised from, de from death, who is also the ruler of the kings of the world, Revelation 1, 5. The kings of the world refer to you because Jesus has made you a priest and a king unto our God. Did you know that? Revelation 1, 5 and 6 and Revelation 5, 10. So remember, several people were raised from the dead physically, from physical death, before Jesus was raised from the dead. Because Jesus is called the firstborn from the dead. You remember that Elijah and Elisha, 
raised a boy from the dead. In Nain, the city of Nain, Jesus raised the widow's son from the dead. Uh, he raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. He also raised the young girl, uh, the daughter of Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue, Mark 5, from the dead, okay? All this happened before Jesus was raised from the dead, but Jesus is called the firstborn from the dead. So, Jesus wasn't the firstborn from the physical dead, who, whose spirit and soul were waiting in Abraham's bosom, being comforted, Luke 6, verse 20 through 31. Jesus was the firstborn from spiritual death, where his spirit and soul was in hell, being tormented, as our substitute, where we would have gone if we didn't have Jesus as our Lord and Savior. All right, just a side note, Abraham's bosom was just a compartment in the earth separated from hell. And you'll read about that if you read the scriptures that I gave you. I think it was from the book of Luke, okay? And so the, the people waiting there had a, I'm gonna say a promissory note from God because they had the, the blood of a four-legged lamb a four-legged animal, until the real adequate blood sacrifice, the blood of Jesus, could be shed for their sins, and then they'll go up into heaven. And I'll probably tell you more about that in another lesson. To show how Jesus could be called the firstborn from the dead, I want you to remember that God told uh, Adam and Eve that the day that they eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. It says, for in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Uh, Genesis 2.17, all right? As it turned out, they did eat, as you know, but they didn't die physically for 930 years from Genesis 5.5. 5. That was Adam, at least, okay? So either God lied in Genesis 2.17, that you'll, the day you eat thereof, you'll die, or it proves to you and I that there's both a spiritual death and a physical death. Adam and Eve died spiritually. They no longer had the nature of God in them. They now had the nature of the devil in them. A person who doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, we could say it's a, a harsh term, but we could say they're, they're spiritually dead. In that, they're separated from God by their sin nature, although they're still alive physically. That was our condition before we were born again and made Jesus the Lord of our life. Ephesians 2.5 says that even though we were alive physically, we were dead in our sins, but God made us alive, meaning spiritually, in Christ. Remember, Romans 4, no, Romans 1.4 says that Jesus is declared to be the Son of God by the resurrection from the dead, not by hanging on the cross, okay? And we're not belittling the cross. The cross is super important, but it's not where we could be born again. Sons of God, heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ, priests, kings, ambassadors, all that great stuff, okay? We're finding out that there's more to redemption than Jesus being made sin with our sinfulness, taking our sin off of us. There were still consequences, and we're finding that out. From Ephesians 1, 19 through 21, and I want you to memorize um, Ephesians 1, 15 through 23. And it would be easy for you to do because it just kind of like flows, okay? And it talks about the exceeding greatness of God's power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought or worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and mights and dominions and every name that can be named. But I want you to know clearly that from Ephesians 1, 19 through 21 at least, tells us that because of the resurrection, Jesus is now far above all principalities and powers and mights and dominions and every name that can be named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. And his power is towards usward because of the resurrection. I'm Pastor Glenn Curry. I love you. Speak blessings. I want the best for you. Keep hanging in here. Treat these lessons uh, on It Is Finished, I'm calling it, That's they, they each have a different title, but treat it like Bible school. Please keep watching and keep exciting, believing your eyes are going to be open to new stuff. Please like and subscribe below. Use your faith. Have a good attitude. Make a great day.